Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and Harry is gonna have to go on the back burner this week because Archie needs a new clutch, and you know what that means on a 996? IMS and RMS. So for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, um, basically the 996 uh, era of Porsche 911s have a issue with uh, an intermediate shaft bearing that can uh, wear out and if it does, it, uh, the whole engine catastrophically fails and uh, you're up for, up for a new engine. And uh, that has a lot of people scared. Now, my car has about 150,000 Ks and I don't see it's gonna be a real problem. I've had a look and the, uh, the bearing from, uh, from what I've seen in the oil and everything, it all looks perfect. So um, I think it's more than likely fine. But while you're in there, if I've got to change the clutch, you may as well change the, uh, the, the bearing. And I also know it's got a bit of a leak, so I think the remain seal is leaking, which is another issue. So um, we're gonna do that. I am going to film this as a bit of a series. So for this first episode, I'm going to cover the gearbox removal. So uh, let's uh, get Harry down and the car swapped around and let's start having a look at this gearbox. So very first thing before you start anything on pretty much any car project is disconnect the battery. So uh, I'm going to disconnect the negative terminal now, get Archie up in the air and see what's going on. Okay, first step, remove this plastic tray, which is just a couple of screws and uh, remove this aluminum crossbar. So let's do that. All right, I've covered this a few times in previous videos, but I thought it's worth covering again. Just a quick tip that uh, I've been using for a while now. Um, when you're taking parts off of any car, get yourself some of these uh, cheap little part boxes. You can get them from Super Cheap Auto or from wherever. Um, and uh, as you take every part off, put them in the first, put, take the first screws out and put them in the first hole and then right on top where they came from and then put the next ones from the next hole and so on, working your way across. And when you go to reassembly, you just have to do it in the reverse. And if you get to a box and you don't know what they're for, like you can, you can work out and get everything back together the way they're supposed to. There's no messing around with bags in a bucket that's just, no, this is, this is the way to do it, it's good. Okay, so now I've got those pieces out of the way. It is, uh, this could be a good time to drain the transmission oil. Now, I happen to know that less than 5,000 Ks ago, the, uh, the transmission oil has changed in this uh, to a, uh, a good oil. So. I'm happy to leave it in there. It's not worth draining it just for the sake of it. Um, but this is a good time to do it. Uh, if it hasn't been done, you know it hasn't been done for a while, definitely change the engine oil now. The next step after that is to uh, undo these eight Allen head bolts around each of the drive shafts. And uh, uh, these drive shafts should just sort of fall away from the, uh, the transmission. So let's do that. Okay, these uh, drive shafts were not that difficult to remove, but uh, you do need to uh, sort of do the, the bottom few bolts with the handbrake on, because otherwise the wheels spin or the, the drive shaft spins. Uh, handbrake on in gear and then um, do the bottom half, take the handbrake off, turn the wheels by hand around and then do the other half and they come off quite easily and they just come straight off. Um, the next thing I need to tackle is uh, right up the top up here, is uh, this is the clutch slave cylinder. It's on the left-hand side of the engine. Now, you can undo the, um, the, the actual uh, line going into it, but uh, I would not suggest that because then you have to bleed it all again and it's a pain. Uh, much easier, or it's, it's hard to get to, but there's uh, two 30 mil bolts up in here. Uh, so just undo the whole slave cylinder off of the side of the transmission and, uh, and pull it out of the way. That's the better way to do it. So uh, let's take that off. Okay, so getting that slave cylinder off was a real mission. I went through a bunch of different uh, extensions and stuff to try and get that off. I managed to get uh, this one here. I'm not sure exactly how long that is. It looks like it's about 100 mil total. Um, it seemed to be the, the only length that I could sort of fit into the space. And I just, uh, it was quite a mission to uh, get it off. If you're doing this on jack stands on the ground, um, it'll probably add to the frustration, but it does come off. So. Uh, I've gotten it off now, moved it out of the way, just pulled it out of the uh, uh, out of its housing. So now it's uh, time to move on. 
Okay, so next step is pretty simple. You just gotta take the uh, gear linkages off. This is these are these two things here. Um, they, these just pop off of here and there's a little clip under the clip and slide these off out of the way. Quick, easy one. So these bits are really easy and uh, now they're disconnected, you can get them out of the way and just, just here on the back of the, uh, of the transmission is the, uh, that's the reversing plug. So just unplug that and uh, we are mostly disconnected. So now it's time to go around and actually start unbolting the, uh, the transmission from the back of the engine. It's not gonna go anywhere uh, because it's held in by the, uh, the transmission mount and the engine. It's all staying there by the, uh, the drive shaft. So you can disconnect it now as it is. Now, apparently all the bolts are 15 mil except for this particular one here, which is a 13 and this one here, which is, uh, you actually need a special tool. It's not, uh, it's not a Torx bit. It's not an Allen head, it's actually a tri-square bit. It's a 12-sided bit, I haven't counted the sides, but uh, you need to get this. Don't try and do it with a Torx bit or whatever because you will uh, end up burying it over. So you need to get the uh, specific tool to do the job. That was painful trying to get the, uh, particularly the top bolt out right in the, um, in the top. But what I did is I got some cardboard, I wrote the top on it and I've placed these all out in the, um, in the order they're supposed to go back into the car in because they're at different lengths. So instead of getting them mixed up and not knowing which one goes where, that is a good tip for um, just uh, basically drawing out the pattern and, uh, and putting them in a piece of cardboard like that. Don't get them mixed up, another tip. All right, so I realized I had to go back and take off the middle cover as well. And um, now I've got the uh, transmission jack underneath. Now you need to be able to have a transmission jack or at least something to sit um, the jack on. Really you need, if you're underneath the car, you're gonna need two jacks. You need one for the transmission and then once you take the transmission off, you need one for the engine to hold the engine up um, because at the moment the, this is sort of being held up here and held up the other end. So once you take this brace out and stuff, there's not much holding it in. So uh, all right, now it's time to strap up the, uh, the gearbox and then I can start undoing some of these uh, uh, brackets that are holding it in. Okay, so now the gearbox is well and truly uh, lashed onto the transmission jack and it's time to start wiggling it open. And I can see there's actually some movement here already. So it's already starting to move off of the, uh, uh, the engine itself. Before I go any further, I'm going to put this under hoist jack stand up here just to uh, hold the engine up because um, once I take the, uh, the gearbox off, there's uh, not gonna be a lot holding the front of the engine up. Um, I actually went to try and order one of these from Super Cheap, but because uh, I, I didn't plan ahead, I've got to wait for it to come in. So I went down to Benny's and just uh, borrowed this. Thankfully, he's uh, uh, graciously lent this to me. So let's prop up this engine and get it to sort of some support for, on it so that uh, I can start taking this transmission off. Okay, so there's definitely been a lot of leaking in here. You can see uh, there's a whole bunch of oil built up below the clutch there, but um, at least the, uh, the transmission is now off, so it's time to uh, get this clutch off and see what the state of this flywheel is like. Okay, so the uh, clutch is off and um, what you might not know, the uh, 996 has a dual mass flywheel. So basically what that means is that there are two plates that are sort of held together and they're sort of slightly sprung. So if there's any jarring or shocking, shock loading to the transmission, to the drive line, it will, uh, it will just give just a bit, just so that you can uh, it'll absorb that and make it a, a smoother ride. Um, as you can see in this car, um, they should move um, basically they sh it should be quite tight and quite difficult to move it. And this one is very loose. And you can also see that the, uh, um, the, the burn marks on the flywheel here. So you can see that the clutch has been going for a while. 
The clutch itself is uh, is pretty worn down. It's getting pretty low, and there's a lot of burn marks on the uh, the clutch plate itself as well. So that all needs to be changed. I have a new clutch. Um, I was hoping I didn't have to replace the flywheel. You can't actually, from what I understand, you can't machine dual mass flywheels, but. Um, you often sort of, uh, I think the rule of thumb is you change the dual mass flywheel once every second clutch, something like that. So uh, in this case, it needs to be replaced, which is unfortunate because it's quite expensive, but uh, it's got to be done. So uh, I'm now going to just uh, remove the, um, the flywheel itself with the uh, flywheel bolts and uh, see what we've got in behind. All right, so um, now I'm getting up to the stage where I need to undo the uh, flywheel bolts. I've got some of them out with the impact that came out pretty easy, but uh, some of them aren't. So I need a way to lock the flywheel. Now, there is actually a, uh, a tool you can buy that locks into the, uh, the teeth of the flywheel here that does the job. That is the, uh, um, one of the recommended ways. The way I'm gonna try and do it is, uh, the way I uh, hold it on the old 911 engine is using a, just a piece of strapping. I've got some holes in it. Um, I put in one of the gearbox um, mounts, uh, gearbox bolts, because it, uh, it's the right size and I'm less likely to, uh, I don't wanna damage the, uh, the bell housing bolts. So that's in the bell housing hole. And then just get one of the uh, pressure plate bolts and bolt it up to here and strap between the two. Now. Hopefully, that will do the job. I do have the flex of the dual mass flywheel, so we'll see if that works. But it still works. So this is looking pretty ugly, but I think the, uh, the main weep is actually coming from underneath the, uh, from the Remain seal. I don't think it's coming from the IMS, but I'm not sure. Either way, um, it's off now. It's time to uh, clean it all up and then I can uh, look at doing some replacing. All right, and we'll call that the end of part one of the uh, clutch replacement slash IMS slash RMS uh, journey. So, um, as always, uh, make sure if you need any Porsche parts at all, uh, compare prices first at PorschePartsByJeff.com. Also, um, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you join us on Patreon, you get to watch the videos a day early. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.